Hey guys, my name is Harman Singh. I'm an internal medicine resident down in Southern California, and this is a day in my life. So today guys, we're gonna be going through a clinic day. Currently as an internal medicine resident, I'm on a CCU rotation, which is a cardiac critical unit, uh, where we see a lot of acute patients, heart failure patients, a lot of serious stuff. But on a day like this, we follow them up in the clinic where, uh, where it's more taking care of their chronic heart failure and uh, in a less acute setting. So being a new intern, just starting out, I think I'm four months in now on the CCU unit uh, with co amidst COVID pandemic going on, makes things a little trickier. So already it would be a little difficult, but on top of COVID, there's a lot of precautions we take. A lot of procedures are slowed down and can't be done because patients need COVID testing or certain protocols need to be taken. So uh, added a little extra layer to the learning curve uh, of uh, being a new doctor. So why internal medicine? I am, like I said, just starting off and there was a lot of choices to go through. I, I was debating between neurology, even psychiatry was really interesting to me. But in the end of the day, when you think about what a doctor is, I didn't want to miss out on that experience of going through and treating those most common conditions that you see in the hospital and making sure that when I was done with my training, I could handle all of those conditions and be able to treat these people. So. That was kind of one rationale and the other one was the flexibility. With internal medicine, you can do almost anything, specialize in the heart, lung, kidneys, whatever it may be. So that's why internal medicine. So that's the end of clinic day and that's a little shorter day than I'm usually used to when I'm in the hospital, which is a completely different environment. So it's a good change to have. Um, in terms of the patients that we see, like I mentioned, it's more chronic, more stable patients, uh, people that come in with congestive heart failure, not exacerbations, but you're more managing their medications for their more chronic condition. Um, you're kind of dealing with their other issues that they have, diabetes, their weight, uh, issues like that, that you're trying to correct for more long-term. Um, so it's a lot more relaxed. Your patients are, for the most part, my patients are all pleasant uh, individuals. I get along with them. I love seeing them. So. A very nice day for me. I love clinic days. Something that I've come to learn being in the CCU is that it's more than just treating the acute patient that's in front of you. Over time with these sick individuals that are, are in critical condition, you get to know their families a lot better than you think you would. Some more than others, but you do form these connections with people's fathers, mothers, sisters. You, you really become part of their life for this tough time. Uh, that they're going through. So these memories they're gonna have for the rest of their life. So you play a critical role in talking to these people and working through the issue that's going on. And when these people get really sick and they code and you're running the code on somebody that you have been connecting with and their family you know, it's a totally different feeling. And it might be something that you wanna be mentally prepared for going into medicine. And if you're, you're thinking of being a doctor, just know that there's an entire different aspect you're gonna have to, to manage being a doctor, the aspect of talking to people's families and dealing with, with life and death with them. So we talked about how difficult residency is. So what are some things you can do to get yourself ready and set up to succeed in residency? Well, my number one advice would be to start in third and fourth year medical school. While it's gonna be your last time to really relax, especially during your fourth year where you can have some rotations and some time to just kind of chill before you go into residency, you do wanna make sure you get some of the critical rotations in there. So if you're going into internal medicine, make sure you do an ICU rotation. Really try to pick up on how, to, how ventilators work and how pressors work. Things like that is going to go a long way when you go into residency. And along with that goes reading. Make sure you're continuously reading. Pick up a topic every day. If you read one topic a day, 
starting like third year, you will know so much by the end of your fourth year. So just stay on top of your stuff and hopefully I'll help you out in residence. So one clutch thing about Trader Joe's, when you're on CCU, you don't have time to go home and cook anything. So what I do is I come here and get those pre-made salads and literally that's my, that's my day. Every day is just a salad. So I get five salads, salad a day, and I'm done with my meal. So Trader Joe's comes in clutch. So the first step when we get home of our sanitation process is of course washing our hands because uh, try to get that COVID off of us. And then next thing is to get our scrubs and they go straight into the washing machine uh, because you gotta have a nice fresh pair of scrubs the next day. You don't want that COVID sitting around your apartment. So that's what we're gonna do next. So guys, we are back home and that's pretty much what a clinic day is. Wake up, go to clinic, have a little more of a relaxed day, uh, go get groceries, go get errands done on this day, kind of get a little time to recharge, make sure you get your studying in when we get home because unfortunately being a doctor doesn't mean the studying ends ever because you got to keep on studying and um, just kind of getting ready for the day again and to do it again. And tomorrow is more of a harder day back to the CCU, back to the hospital. So be sure to sleep early today. So being a resident that is in their first year and was busy in medical school and didn't really get a chance to meet somebody, uh, still being single at the moment for a variety of reasons, uh, what am I looking for in a girl? Uh, right now, I guess somebody that understands number one, what being a doctor is, which would be kind of compatibility with lifestyle. That's, that's gonna be a huge thing where somebody that understands you're gonna to have to wake up at 5 a.m. and be home at 7 p.m. every day, almost every day <laughs> would, be, would be ideal. I think that's why a lot of nurses kind of end up dating doctors because they kind of understand how that goes and they have similar lifestyles. I'm not saying that necessarily has to be a nurse, but basically compatibility, understanding of the lifestyle would be number one. Uh, number two, kind of the basics, somebody that's nice, somebody that's, uh, uh, a partner in life to go forward with and uh, just kind of do stuff with into the same stuff outdoorsy stuff uh, hanging out uh, you know chilling maybe playing basketball maybe she can uh, you know we can get some one-on-one -on -one in something like that so somebody that's out to do stuff um, and just down for anything I think those are the kind of main things I look for and obviously the third thing would unfortunately have to get along with my mom because uh, that's that's kind of the prerequisite for a lot of things, unfortunately. <laughs> and I know a lot of Indian guys get roasted for that too, uh, the whole mother-in-law jokes and stuff like that. But unfortunately, ladies, that's a, that's a prerequisite. So some tips for you guys out there that are applying to medical school. Some things to look out for. How, how do you know what medical school to apply to? There's so many different options these days. There's of course your traditional MD schools. There's DO schools out there. There's uh, schools out of the country, there's schools in the Caribbean, there's things like podiatry that people don't even think about, which are foot doctors. Um, so lots of different options out there. After you decide what your statistics and what your interests align with, maybe you wanna learn OMM with your hands, manipulative medicine, you can do the DO route. Maybe you have family, you can go out of country and kind of visit them. Once you consider all that, you also want to consider the school itself because the schools vary widely. There's schools with completely mandatory classes. There's schools that do early clinical experiences where they send you out as early as your first year to hospitals. Um, so many different routes. Schools have research built into their curriculum. There's individuals say you're interested in a particular specialty. Uh, they might have special faculty there for you that you want to work with. So a lot of different things to take into account. Just don't look at, I know location is a huge deal for people. Um, and in, for most people, just getting into any medical school is, is, uh, is amazing these days with how competitive it is. But just something to keep in mind when you're talking about your first, second, third, fourth choice, um, make sure you do your research onto all these other factors that I mentioned. So what does an internal medicine resident do when they're not at the hospital, which is uh, unfortunately not a lot of the time, but we still have to fill it up with something. Um, unfortunately, this year, there's something going on, which is the coronavirus pandemic, which has made it even harder for all of us residents to meet. A lot of us residents came to a new city, new place. We don't know many people. You usually connect with your co-residents when you get to a program like this. Uh, we didn't really even have 
much of a, a get together, meeting, meet and greet because of COVID. We haven't really had time to hang out much. We didn't even have a resident retreat, which is what um, a day where all the residents get together and go to a beach or go to something cool. Unfortunately, we didn't even have that. So it makes it a little difficult to do stuff. Gyms are closed, bars are closed. Um, especially here in California, we still have some really tight restrictions. Um, so it makes it really hard to do fun stuff. Uh, most of it has been getting together, doing a board night game, uh, video games at home are still always an option. Um, of course, I keep busy with doing stuff like YouTube and stuff like that, which uh, is, is fun and, and a great kind of way to get, get some of this time down. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, just like a lot of you, we're kind of just in pandemic blues, just hanging out at home. So guys, the last thing I want to leave you on, I know there's a ton of videos out there and you're probably, if you're watching this video, I assume you're into medicine and you want to be a doctor someday or you are a doctor. I just want to get out there after being in residency, being a first year internal medicine resident and already having some fellow doctors of mine in my class kind of have dropped out due to the long hours, the difficulty managing patients. Uh, they feel like it's a big responsibility having people's lives in their hands. Um, it can be scary, it can be daunting. And uh, this is something that you have to be ready for by the time you get to residency. So if you're out there and you're an aspiring doctor, make sure it's something you wanna do, get exposure, follow. If you're doing a following a doctor and shadowing, make sure you're following them for their whole shift, really analyzing what they're doing and if it's something that you wanna do in the future. Because once you hit residency, residency is very, very difficult. Um, if you think medical school is hard, it, once you get to residency, it's a whole different ballpark. So um, make sure it's something you want to do and, and then just try your best and pursue it. And there's plenty of good tips out there, definitely on this channel as well, on the Med School Insiders, they've got your back. So, so uh, just keep pushing forward and, and I think you'll do well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and following me in a day in my life. If you guys haven't recognized me, my name's Harmon from the Med Bros channel here on YouTube as well. Be sure to check out that channel and hit subscribe there along with hitting subscribe on this channel. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.